If I now go over to my S3 management console, you can see these are all my images here. As you can see, I've named these images with dates in them because I may want to change the messaging on my home page. And if I do, I don't want to get into a situation where I've changed the expiration date of an image and then when I go to update it, it gets ignored because I've told the system to never ever reload my images again until sometime in 2038. Because I don't want that, I'm going to name each of the images with a date and then when I want to change an image, if I should ever want to, then I'll just change the date and then refer to a different image. Going back to the page speed results, you can see here that a number of my images have no expiration date on, so let's change that. You highlight it, right click it, do properties, click over to metadata and then say add more metadata, and then in this list look for expires and then put a valid date way out into the future. I've put Friday the 31st of December 2038 at 4 o'clock in the afternoon GMT and then press save. I'm going to go and do that for the rest of the slides in my slideshow and hopefully the next time I click on refresh results here all this page speed will have stopped complaining about my expiration dates not being set. Right, I've gone and I've renamed all of my images in the slideshow to be January 2012, which is when I'm making this video. And that means that if I ever want to change one of these images, I just need to change the date and it'll have a new name. And if I look at the metadata for each one, you'll see I've got expires on the 31st of December in 2038. I found that I do need to specify the value exactly like this with a time, a time zone and a full date. And I've done that for all of them. They all expire on that date in the future. So if we now go to page speed, not only are the images being served from a server near you, they are now also with a hugely futuristic expires date. So let's go and have a look at what page speed now says. I'll just run that. Oh great, we've gone up to 91 out of 100. That's a, an improvement, but we've still got some browser caching that we could do. The enable compression will be taken care of by the HT access, which I'll show you underneath. As long as you take care of using W3 super cache, and also making sure that you set the expiration date on your images, either the way I did or via the HT access file, you'll have done two of the biggest hits that you can get. Obviously, you do want to make sure that your images are pretty well optimized and not, you know, really, really heavy when they don't need to be. But those are your two biggest hits. There are several other things you can do, but it is at this stage the law of diminishing returns. So once you get over 90, then that's pretty good. I've only just scraped it at 91. Oh, and there's one other thing to say, of course, what I've been looking at is my homepage. And when you do this for yourselves, your site's more than just your homepage. For example, I've gone to my contact page now, and that's got slightly different issues, and it's got a score of 90 out of 100. So I really ought to look at deferring the parsing of JavaScript here. But as I said, I haven't covered that in this video. There are loads and loads of little things you can do, but each page will have its own result, and so you have to look at each page individually. 